Hey there viewers and welcome back. Let's take a look at the first auto body project. It's gonna be a flatty, so we're gonna get you a piece of metal very similar to this. This is just a recycle. I could spray the back. I've just been kind of sitting around. So I wanna do something cool with it. So the idea here is obviously to get you sort of familiar with the metal refinishing process. Uh, this has different layers on it now, so we're gonna take it down to the metal. Uh, no, we don't typically always have to do that, but uh, this one's just gonna work out better. We're gonna go bare metal. Uh, we're gonna go through the primer stages and then into the base coat. We're gonna do a two-tone with a clear coat on top. So the idea here is that we take you through the entire painting process. Uh, you understand what your project is supposed to look like, what steps are involved, what sandpapers, I use, and that's just personal opinion. Yes, the data sheet helps you there, but uh, kind of gets you a general idea of what it is that you're looking for. So step one in this process is to clean the panel with both a solvent and a water-based wax and grease remover. So let's make that happen. I'm gonna go ahead and use, uh, we're using SPI's uh, water-based wax and grease cleaner. So uh, I'll get you a number for that. Really doesn't matter if you're using a BASF. Uh, I would probably start with the RM909. I know it seems a little bit backwards, but uh, I would obviously, if this was a car, would wash the car with soap and water. But, you know, just being a panel, probably don't have to do that. So anyway, I'm going to do both sides such that I can tape this down to the table so it doesn't move around quite so much on me for the purposes of this demonstration. Uh, now that that's done, I'm gonna take 710 or RM900 if you're using BASF's line. Nothing wrong with that, aside from the price. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and use the solvent on a different rag, like I said, because um, it helps to kind of dry out that wax and grease uh, water-based stuff. So my table is definitely not clean, so I am going to repeat this process after I clean my tabletop. Make sure these guys are facing different directions. It helps, trust me. I mean, it's not like it's gonna weld it to the table, but it will keep it from sliding around but your tabletop has to be clean. All right, there we go. Look at that. We are going to use 3M Cubitron, not a sponsor. Uh, I do like the hook and loop, it costs a lot more money, but if you're going to invest in a system for the DA sander, definitely hook and loop has that. I'm gonna use 3M's P100, not a sponsor. Uh, for sanding this down. I'm gonna go ahead and start, we'll time lapse most of this, but uh, we're just gonna use this guy flat. And we're gonna take this all the way down to the metal. Now that we are finished up with the 80 grits, we are gonna switch over to 150. I suppose you could prime over 80 grit scratches. It's not really my favorite thing. Uh, this is 3M's red P150, this uh, 1223. Don't buy it. it. It doesn't really last very long. So um, I'm just using this up till I switch over to this Cubitron 2, which I dearly love. The price is a little higher on it, but uh, I suppose it depends on the scope of the project. So we hit this guy with 80, like I said before, just to get us down a good scratch in the metal, get any you know, mill scale, anything like that off. We're gonna get this to 150 now, 
and then we'll be able to prime it. So um, I would probably not sand plastic with 80 and take it into the booth. Um, you probably will get away with 80 grit scratch and priming it on metal. But I just want, for the purposes of your knowledge, to, to understand there's a difference between an 80 grit scratch and plastic and metal. So this is the process for metal. We'll have a plastic video later on. Let's get started with 150. Same process. Now that we have hit this with 150, uh, why am I vacuuming the table off? Um, camera. Cameras don't like dust. So I'm trying to be respectful of that and keep this working as long as we can. Uh, if you have dents, you'll see them show up like these little pimples here on the paper. Uh, come see me. We're not really interested in uh, doing a lot of body work on this panel. It should be fairly easy. If you're wondering what the background noise is, uh, a couple folks on a Saturday are installing a transmission into a truck. So anyway, uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to wipe this with a solvent based like a 909 or a 710 once again because this is ready for primer. So now that we're at the primer stage, uh, the primer that I absolutely dearly love is this RMP series. We'll talk about primer obviously in the classroom but for the purposes of this we're going to go with the really short skinny condensed you know Campbell's soup sort of version uh, rmp26 is a direct to metal primer meaning it can be sprayed right onto metal uh, it can be sprayed on plastic obviously with the appropriate uh, provisions adhesion promoters and things like that happening beforehand um, good for fiberglass it's pretty much a jack of all trades primer so not every primer you purchase um, can actually be sprayed directly on metal. A lot of people don't know that. It hardens with RMH57 and it reduces with UR series of reducers. So at the 40, 50, 60, um, I think there's a 40, either way. Uh, 50 in the summer, excuse me, 60 in the summer, probably 50 in the uh, fall slash winter time, which is where we're at. But we have 60, which is designed for 85 degrees plus spraying temperatures, which in February, will happen because our booth is heated. All right, folks, we are now ready to apply primer. We have allowed our panel to dry, to gas off. Doesn't have any major flaws on it. Uh, you probably can't see the whole thing. I understand that. Um, we are going to put three medium wet coats of primer on it. I really, really, really want you to pay attention to how I apply the primer. Um, have me mix it for you, have me check your project and everything here before you head into the booth. So um, when we're done with the three separate medium wet coats, probably with about 10 minutes in between uh, for flash, uh, we'll let this project dry overnight and then we'll block sand it tomorrow or whatever the next day happens to be. Let's get started spraying that primer.
Okay, folks, that is the end of chapter one. So we need to let the primer sit overnight, uh, let it gas off. I, you can bake it. Uh, look at the TDS or the technical data sheet. It does talk about, you know, an elevated temperature down to like four hours of cure time, but it doesn't really do the product any justice. Uh, it doesn't make it more durable. It doesn't make it last longer. It just makes it function quicker. So we put the primer on it. Tomorrow we're gonna block it out. I like to let it sit overnight personally on all the projects that I do. That way we get the shrinkage out of the way and let all the solvents out. We're not, you know, trapping solvents or anything like that uh, in the coats of primers. So uh, tomorrow, like I said, we'll look at getting the primer all flattened out and pretty. And once that process is done, uh, the hand blocking and the DA sanding on that, a little different than what we did today, uh, then we'll be ready for base coat. So we'll pick a simple sort of uh, color scheme. I'm thinking two colors. And then uh, once the base coat's on it, and our you know masking and all of that stuff is done then uh, just clear coat and probably a little nib and buff because around here i'm sure we're going to get some dirt in it all right folks welcome to day two on a sunday so we let this guy sit overnight uh, we put our three medium wet coats uh, everything looked nice uh, we were really shooting that probably 50 to 70 percent overlap as far as our spray pattern happened. Hopefully you saw that in the booth. Uh, what's going to happen today is we're going to use a product called Guide Coat and uh, there ain't nobody too good for Guide Coat. And what it is is a rather expensive uh, black powder. So it comes with a foam applicator and the idea is that it's kind of hard to see the primer change color as you are applying or excuse me as you're sanding so we put this black powder on it and it comes in a couple different colors uh, and the idea is that you block sand with a sanding block uh, this black powder off when all the black is gone then your surface is theoretically perfectly smooth let's go ahead and get started with that i'm thinking on this uh 220 on a uh, semi-rigid block so i'm just going to go ahead and uh i'm going to use 3m's hook and loop not a sponsor. I really do like their uh, products, but um, sometimes this hook and loop stuff's cut a little bit wonky. Uh, I kind of like the PSA, if you will, the sticky back a little bit more. So what we're going to do, so I'm just going to start in a corner and keeping the block flat, because this is a flat piece, uh, we're going to sand and you notice when I'm cross sanding kind of with this X pattern uh, that some spots are sanding first and those are going to be our high spots and then the spots that sand last are going to be the low spots. So no good if we sit here and just try to dig the guide coat out. That's, that's not what we're looking for. So it's a flat panel. We want to keep the sanding block flat and then we'll have a flat project when we're all done. If we do happen to sand through the primer, um, we'll just prime it again or fix whatever our body work was. So you'll also notice I'm sanding up to the edge. I always try to avoid sanding on an edge because you'll just cut the primer off pretty quickly. We'll just keep doing this. And then uh, I try to keep part of my block on a good part of the project. And then my other part of the block kind of on the mystery part. So I'm always sanding up to a good, you know, known surface. And you also definitely notice we are not tipping the sanding block. That is definitely a big no-no on a project like this. There may be some exceptions, but we're just not gonna get into that on a project. Uh, that's our first one. So remember that cross sanding. Don't just sit here and sand in, in uh, one direction.
Now that our project is blocked out with 220, uh, it blocked beautifully. I don't need to take it back in the booth. We're actually gonna guide coat it a second time. I'm hoping the tape on the back of it holds out for one more sanding round. And uh, basically the hard part of this primer is done at this point. So I'm gonna machine sand it or DA sand it with a 320. And then I think I'm gonna do red. So I'm probably gonna leave off on a, uh, on a 400 thereabouts or something like that. So what I got in the project now is a bunch of, not super coarse, but there's some deep sand sand scratches and I cannot have those because my uh, metallics will fall into them and it'll very much show up. You'll have sand scratches in your paint. Okay, let's leave it at that. So I'm gonna use a uh, DA sander and uh, personally, I use a, uh, let's see, a 330 seconds orbit. So a black handled uh, sander, a Dyna braid, whatever. It, it doesn't really matter which brand you pick but something called a finish sander. I do use a foam interface pad on that. And then uh, I'll use a 320, uh, 3M's blue. Again, not a sponsor, nor is Dynabrate, of course. Just what I happen to use here. And we'll sand this guide coat off, and then I'm gonna clean it good, look, make sure all the scratches are out, and then I'll either go to my 400 or my 500, because that's what my paint data sheet says to do. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Everything is cleaned off real nice tabletop uh, the project etc etc um, I'm gonna guide coat one more time and then I'm gonna just hit it with some p400 on a power standard to get the uh, 320 scratches out so I did inspect the panel in the interim everything looked pretty good boy it's about empty uh, anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try that 400 usually I do 500 but uh, I'm gonna try 400 this time since this is a uh, practice project and see how that goes. So getting rid of this and that. And let's see if we got 400 in here. I gotta go get some here in a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, so no go on the 400. I do know I have that at home, but uh, not here. 400 usually looks, works pretty good if you're doing like a white or something. Where, you don't have a bunch of uh, metallics going on in it. It just goes a little faster. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and uh, hit it with 3M's P500. Right, project is in the booth. Uh, I decided, <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm a little bit tossed up between these two. I have 705 U, which is opulent blue. It's the color I painted my Oldsmobile. There's a series on that. I'll finish it one day. Uh, and Torrid Red, uh, WA687. I haven't sprayed a lot of this. Kind of gives you an idea of the color. Uh, kind of a pop in red. And then uh, 99 Pontiac. Boy, this is a few years back. <laughs> 2015, I painted this car and uh, trying to see what the number for it is. Uh, I don't know. This is bright white, GM 16. Oh, WA9753. So I got about a half a quart of this. Uh, 
So I don't know maybe if I want to do some white. I'm going to figure it out. My project is elevated. Uh, it's sitting on a couple of cans to keep the dirt uh, that maybe is on the surface that I'm spraying uh, to keep it off of the project. Um, I also wax and grease removed it with both the uh, water-based and the solvent-based. I made sure to not touch the top, so it's just in there drying. I like to give that some time with the fan on, but obviously it's kind of hard to hear me when said fan is running. So anyway, wax and grease cleaner, done. 500, done. Scratch-free, done. No metal showing, done. Color picking, pending. Oh yeah, not a tutorial on how to mix paint. I've already cut this, so we're gonna basically just dump it into a cup. And uh, boy, I like that red. Might even do a white with it. Anyway, I'm getting ideas here. We're just gonna dump it into one of the 3M PPS cups. Not a sponsor, uh, it is a very convenient system to use. So what's gonna happen, I'm gonna go into the booth and I'm gonna wipe my project with a teal tack rag. And then I'm gonna put probably three medium with uh, probably a 50% ish overlap going on this so that we can get hiding. So we're not gonna go a full wet running off the panel type of coat or anything like that. Um, this actually hides a little bit better when you put it on with lighter coats and just more of them. So I'm thinking three, uh, looks like it's hiding pretty good on this stick. So I don't think we're gonna have any issues with uh, undercoats or anything like that. Let's get in the booth. I have sprayed the red. Uh, hopefully you saw kind of my spraying technique and how I did that, uh, the three medium coats. I did do the edge at the end, and then I like to put kind of a little bit of a dust coat on at the end just for metallics. Um, I take a tack rag over it all anyway, uh, so it shouldn't be a problem. I think it makes it pop a little bit better. I don't have to match it to anything, so that's just kind of what I decided to do. This red is not metallic, so uh, you can kind of completely ignore the little mist coat, if you will, that we did at the end. So TDS, uh, the data sheet says to wait 15 minutes before taping. Uh, I'm gonna wait 30, because I got a couple of other things that I wanna do. And then uh, we'll figure out in that time uh, what kind of stripe we wanna put on this. Um, I'll figure out if I'm gonna do a red or a blue. I'm kind of thinking, or excuse me, a white or a blue or silver. So, got a half hour to figure that out. Okay, so it's been a half hour. We're gonna throw a tape. I think I'm just gonna do a diagonal. I think it looks better than something across the middle. Just my opinion, whatever a customer wants. Uh, so, I am gonna use 3M's Fine Line. I have two flavors of that. The uh, quarter inch and the eighth inch. So, I'll probably use the quarter on this and then uh, some of the yellow masking tape. Let's make that happen. I'm gonna go ahead. Hopefully there's enough on this roll. Kind of eyeball the center of that fillet. Doesn't have to be absolutely stinking perfect. Kind of eyeball the center of that fillet.
just want your line to be straight. Okay. All right, fairly straight. I'm gonna eyeball it real quick. I like it. Gently gonna press that down. And then I'm just gonna throw this roll away and uh, fold this over to the back. This line is more or less for me to divide um, my tape. So I'm gonna get a different size tape real quick. I'm gonna get a couple sizes. Uh, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna make an offset, if you will, uh, from this line. So what I'm covering in my mind I actually plan to have silver. I think I'm going to do a silver. And we're just trying to make it look like not standard masking tape lines. You know, everybody kind of knows the size masking tape comes in and I think it looks tacky. So we're going to basically use this as a spacer. Okay. Trying to get that nice and straight. Okay, so let's pretend that what's chilling here is the line that I want white, okay? And it is, all right? Um, what I'm gonna then do, and I might even leave, you know, I'm gonna do, I just got another idea here. Just throw another piece of yellow down. We can always pull it later if we don't like the design. Just trying to get things straight. Mm, barely long enough. Okay. Kind of just nests real nice right in there. Uh, obviously, I would put a piece of tape over the crack, you know when it comes time to paint this. So I think what I want here, since we're the same size, is I'm gonna put one additional piece that's gonna be the keeper piece. This is probably a little bit too long, wasting some tape, but I might just keep that purple piece in the middle. I kinda, I kinda like that. So let's nest that up in there. This is actually the piece that I'm going to stick my uh, masking paper to. Okay. So these two pieces here are actually going to go in a minute. Now, in the interest of symmetry, I mean, you can do a million different styles of stripes and lines, however, you want your project to look. This is, I mean, I've done a lot of these. I really am trying not to just have them all look exactly the same, but it's fine. So we're gonna kind of carefully pull. Remember this kind of is fresh paint. I mean, ideally if you did it right, it doesn't pull the paint off the panel. Okay, I'll just wad that up. Oh, it seems like a little bit of a waste, but uh, kind of is what it is, I guess. These are the two pieces we're gonna keep. I'm gonna push this down. Okay. It's a nice wide stripe, really gonna show off that silver complement that red, uh, give us some action going on in the panel. So it's not just like completely boring to sit there and look at. So kind of like a, like a picture, you don't want it. You want something happening in it. Okay, so I like this kind of a little bit unique offset thing that's going on here. Uh, if you think it's wrong, the same's kind of happening down here on this corner where you know, the size, etc., etc. Okay, all right. 
Next, I am going to mask this thing off. Um, I'm gonna think about it for a minute, see if I maybe wanna put um, some little stripes in. If I wanna put more stripes in, I'll probably just do that off camera, but we're gonna do it the exact same way here. You know, I changed my mind, because <laughs> that never happens. I'm gonna pull two more stripes on this. So we're gonna offset using this, and this uh, purple fine line tape is not used just for doing offsets. I mean, that's, that's not the point behind it. You can buy quarter inch masking tape for like a third the price, seriously. This is to be stretched, bent, moved, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna, well, maybe that piece might be too short, but whatever. Uh, I'm just using it, like I said, as an offset. I'm gonna take eighth inch and I'm gonna put another piece, like as soon as I get control of it. Okay, I'm gonna put another piece here. And this stuff's a little harder to keep going straight, but you'll get the hang of it. Try not to stretch it too much. Okay, so the piece I wanna keep is actually the eighth inch piece. So eyeball it once. We're gonna recycle this little piece, hopefully. Do that exact same thing again. Trying to keep things straight. Again, if there's a little mistake, you're probably gonna be the only one that knows about it. Let's get another eighth inch piece flowing here. We'll smash that down real quick. Getting a little dirt going, probably falling off my coveralls here. But um, I mean, and you can do any, there's a million different ways you can do this. Let's kind of keep it simple. I would avoid text. Um, I do have customers that come up to me and ask me to uh, paint them text and I simply send them, and I've really had great luck with it. I send them to a vinyl shop uh, and have, their, have them cut their stuff out of uh, vinyl. And then I will put the vinyl down over the uh, base coat. And usually just clear it after that, get it done in colored vinyl, whatever suits their fancy. And then, uh, then I don't have to deal with it. So, okay. So everything exposed is gonna be silver and everything hidden is simply going to be red. So if it's under the tape, obviously the edge is gonna be, you know, covered. So let's make that happen. I'm going to clean up my mess here. Uh, we'll cut the camera and we'll come back and we'll mask this sucker. Should be real easy. So straightened up a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the project like such and we're going to get a good see all this is probably the number one issue folks have is they don't uh, don't take the time to wrap the edges nice and crisp. So at the purple tape you got to be careful uh, that you don't twist it too bad at the edge. I'm not too terribly worried about it, but make sure you got a good seal on your masking tape on the edge so we don't overspray underneath it. And we're gonna do the exact same thing over here. Okay. Kind of do a little bit of dust patrol. A very dusty area, unfortunately. Uh, next, I'm just gonna take some paper. This is uh, just regular masking paper. And uh, I'm gonna use one little piece here on the end. We wanna tape it to the tape that we already have. Okay, like that. And usually I wind this off the dispenser, but it seems that our students have used all of the tape off of the masking dispenser. So why? It's actually not real easy to put on there. But uh, I guess whatever works. Just make sure we don't overlap any of that tape. We want our first piece of tape that was sitting there to be our good edge. Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time. 
over here. We're going to pull it back a bit. I think I can get this just with one piece. Looks like it. If you get a crinkle, just make sure it's not going to leak. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is pick up the project. Try not to touch the paint. We're going to fold. Fold that paper in like we're doing a crappy job <laughs> wrapping a Christmas gift here. Fold that over a bit. Get some of my wider tape. Just tape that down. Okay, not too worried about the precision on that stuff. We are worried about the edges. So once we got that secured, should be able to quite easily come by and double check those edges on the back. So I'm just going to put a piece of masking tape on the edge, I'm going to tip it and uh, pull it kind of tight. So not worried about the back of the panel, nobody's going to see it. Okay, nice and tight. And we're going to do that over here. There is an art to masking, if you don't believe it. I struggle with it sometimes. Pull that nice and tight. Nothing's going to be flopping around. That is going to tuck. Hopefully right there. Okay, all right. I think we got it. Might wipe this paper down once here. I didn't touch any of that with my fingers, so I'm not going to do any wax and grease cleaner. I suppose it's optional if you want. I'm just going to tack rag it and take it in the booth. So I have just finished spraying this. I'm gonna unwrap it. it. Still has quite a smell to it. But I am curious to see how it looks. See if it turned out the way we expected. That's kind of like Christmas time. We gotta be a little bit careful around this fresh paint so we don't drag anything through it. Because that would be bad. Looks good so far. Always kind of worry about when it's fresh, touching it or something. It dries pretty quick. For the moment we've been waiting for. We'll just be careful on the edge so we don't pull any paint. It's looking real good so far. Exactly like I want it. If I'm doing a base coat with a whole bunch of metallics in it, I like to put uh, a base clear 
uh, double zero, BC00 over the top so I don't like accidentally pull any of the metallics out of the paint. So we'll just pull this one, looks like it wants to come next. Here's the point where we see if we like what we did. Hopefully we don't hate it. I haven't hated one yet. I have changed them. Sometimes you tape it and you're like, eh, I don't know about it. So come on. Things stuck down here pretty good. Just be careful on that edge. The other nice thing about double zero is that if you got a little bit of overspray or leakage, you can usually just wipe it off pretty easily where this will actually dissolve the color. No good there. So the first project, I'm not going to worry too much about the masking is hundred percent crisp, but this is looking really good so far. Let's find this big old piece here in the middle, kind of dying to see what that looks like. Okay. I like it so far. I do. And it doesn't, Look like we masked it with standard masking tape either. I don't like that look. Okay, and one more piece. Sweet. I think we got this in the bag. It needs to sit for about 30 minutes and then, uh, then we can clear coat it. Hold off easy. All right, there you go. Perfect. That's pretty much what I had in mind. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit in the booth for about a half hour with the heat on, the air flowing. Give it that much time-ish, and then uh, we're gonna put clear on. Clear is gonna be, uh, I hesitate to call it a full wet coat, but it kind of is. It's a little heavier than medium wet, almost a wet. Uh, it's a full closed coat. So you don't want any dry spots or anything like that to happen. I'm going to target about a 70, 75% overlap in my strokes with the, um, with the paint gun. I'm also going to use a different gun. It's going to be the uh, WS 400 by uh, Iwata, not a sponsor of the show, of course, just two really nice guns that I use on my professional projects. Uh, we're going to put I uh, plan to cut and buff this. So I'm going to put uh, four, coats of clear. Uh, typically in a body shop, you're going to do two and nib the dirt out, but I want it to be completely flat, uh, texture free. Um, that gun, the Iwata usually gets us there just spraying like three coats of clear, but I want one extra so that I can get a uh, cut and buff demonstration out of this panel without having to worry about cutting through. So anyway, about a half hour, I'll see you in the booth. Not a sponsor. I'm going to use a bigger PPS for mixing the clear. One to one. I'm going to go ratio of one. So you can open up a childproof container with one hand. Ha -ha. And one. Should be sufficient for this project. got it folks 
end of chapter two. Uh, clear coat went on great, base coat went on great. The color is like, mwah, mm, I really like it. I think it looks better than white. So maybe I'll try something funky on the next project. Uh, four coats of clear, uh, three if you don't have a lot of dirt. We really don't have a lot of dirt, but I had the extra clear mixed anyway. Didn't want to throw it, so I put the four on. Word of caution, a lot of clear coats. Um, not so much the SPI because it's a little slower, but uh, if you put too many coats of clear, you'll get solvent pop. So think about a million tiny pinpricks in your project <laughs> that you can't buff out. So don't get too Western, too thick. Um, I'm giving the clear about 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so between each coat uh, so that I can prevent that. I also drop the temperature in the booth down to about 70, 75 degrees, somewhere in there so that the clear goes a little bit slower. So anyway, with that being said, we'll see you for chapter three, which is going to be the cut and buff. All right, folks, we're back. Uh, what is this, day three? It's actually a snow day today. <laughs> uh, and I made it up here in a car, no problem. Anyway, uh, you can probably tell by uh, that little bit of B-roll there that this turned out absolutely mint. Um, I'm inclined to say part of it's the painter, but uh, trust me, part of it's the gun. So I really, 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 really like that WS400, not a sponsor. Uh, that was purchased out of our money here. Wish I had a gun like that of my own. But um, anyway, uh, so this laid out literally like glass. It has about 15 little pimples of dirt in it. So if I was doing this professionally in a body shop, uh, this finish, the texture on it is, you know, something that you'd find on a you know, an $80,000 vehicle more than likely. In fact, it's probably nicer than that. Uh, so all I would do is I would hand nib or I'd get a little one inch DA sander with some, you know, 1500 or 2000 on it. And I would just nib sand the little pock marks. But um, what I wanna do just for the purposes of being able to buff is I'm gonna run uh, some 1500. I don't like the stuff with the holes in it. It's what we bought, unfortunately. Uh, it's this 307 67. Uh, I would get the six inch dry without the holes. So number one mistake that kids make with this is they use it with water. It's not a wet sandpaper, which is what I really like about it because you can just wipe the swarf off and then you can see exactly if you've sanded enough to where you think you're gonna match that orange peel. So um, I do like this paper, uh, I, the, the 1200, it's, it's good. Uh, I, would, I would just buy the 1500, but get the stuff without the holes in it. So uh, anyway, uh, to finish that off, ah, there's a pain in my wallet right there. Price this stuff out. It's great, you get uh, 15 sheets. It's enough to do actually a couple of cars, a couple of entire refinishes on cars, but it's, it's stupid money. And it's 3M's Trizact that you can use on a DA. I like it. Uh, some body shop enthusiasts say, no, you have to hand block, you know, with 1000 grit and then 2000 grit, which I get it if your finish isn't level, but I'm not doing, um, I'm not doing $100,000 restorations here. So uh, yes, you can hand block the clear uh, with a wet sanding process. Uh, in my opinion, with the stuff that I do, um, I will dry sand it with this 1500 and then I will damp sand it with this uh, 3000 then I hit it with the buffer. It's, you know, probably 90% of what uh, those type of paint jobs would be. So your paint job's really all in the prep work. Um, the guns and the colors just make it look pretty. Uh, let's get to, let's get to sanding. Let's make that happen. All right, what we have here, we have the sanding disc, and then I have an interface pad by Meguiar's slash 3M. Um, I believe it's the S6FI. It's a little more rigid than the uh, standard $20 uh, 3M one. I like the 3M one a little bit more. Uh, this one is a little bit cheaper. So what I'm gonna start with doing 
is uh, I'm going to sand the whole panel. I'm going to sand all the texture out of it. We're going to make it nice and flat. So I'm just going to start, work my way up to the edge. Run the sander about this speed. Now one thing to realize is the life expectancy of this sandpaper is about a minute and a half. So as soon as I see it start leaving pigtails, you'll see these uh, swirls. You got to stop, change the sheet off of the panel and put a new sheet on, resand that area. Uh, otherwise it's just going to haunt you when you go to buff. It's terrible. Keeping the sander flat. Um, I'm not going to worry. We got a little bit thick here on the edges. I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, you're, you're just really not going to see it when you buff. You could block sand that out if you so desire, but we're just going to leave it for the purposes of this project. What we're going to do now is we're just going to take a clean microfiber and we're going to wipe the project and shake away as much dust. We're going to make sure that we have the orange peel looking the way that we want it so that I didn't miss any spots or anything. Looks like I need to sand a little bit more right there is about the only spot. I also don't worry about if there's a lump where I did the two, the two tone job. Uh, your manufacturers say that that is acceptable even on a brand new vehicle. So don't obsess trying to sand that out. I did put enough clear on this that I'm not worried at all if I did want to sand it out, which I did. But uh, if you only did two coats of clear, you'll be into the primer before you unfortunately can get rid of that. <laughs> And you can kind of feel that sandpaper will start floating on top of the surface when it's worn out. It just, it feels like it's losing bite, losing traction, if you will. And then it's definitely time to throw it away. So, all right, we are ready at this point, definitely to uh, rub this down with some 3000, which will be done damp. So let me pull the disc off. I'm gonna clean the interface pad and we're gonna use the 3000 with an interface pad. So for the $100 that that box costs, I think it's well worth the reduction in, in buffing time. So we're simply gonna put some regular plain, I just use tap water. If you use too much, um, this disc just hydroplanes. So it's more of a damp than a wet, so. We're gonna go a north-south, east-west, north-south, east-west, north-south, east-west. So about three times, and then a little bit of a variation between that. You also notice I'm not letting my uh, hose drag the project. <laughs> Okay, that should suffice. I am gonna make sure not to get any garbage on the sanding disc, seriously, they're like five bucks a piece, okay? So I'm gonna rinse this guy off in the sink and then I'm gonna put it in a sealed sandwich bag. We're just gonna take our microfiber. We really don't wanna let this dry because it kind of welds itself onto the project. So we're just gonna make sure that we have everything the way we want it. Then, theoretically, ready for buffing, which is one of my favorite parts, uh, including buffing the edges. Uh, it's something you get good at after a while, but you really get to see your uh, clear coat and this SPI, not a sponsor, clear coat is, uh, it's a phenomenal clear, especially in its price class. I like it honestly a lot more than many of the BASF uh, RM 
and the DC uh, series of clears that I've used. So uh, it just doesn't bake, but you don't need to bake. It's truly a great clear. Uh, let's get the buffer out. I really like the way that looks. That's, that's really nice. Okay, so I have three different wheels. I have a blue one that's uh, not here. Uh, but these are my two primary workhorse uh, wheels I really like for the projects we do here. Uh, the six inch uh, 3M wheels. They all go on the uh, what, 830, 849. I think they have an XP version. I have the newer model of this one at home uh, just for my personal use. But uh, I use the 3M quick adapter and the six inch. You can go up to like an eight inch or a 10 inch, I think. Just check 3M's website. They make some seriously big productivity driven wheels, but uh, the littler ones are better, I think, for these projects. So when you're buffing, I'm gonna put a bead of compound, which you're gonna see on the panel, and then I'm gonna buff flat, and the pad is turning, okay? And you have to be careful when you get to the edge because if you keep the pad flat, it's gonna hook this edge uh, when the pad comes back around in this direction here. And that would be really bad. And what happens is you end up burning the edge. So I'm gonna put ever so slight of a tip uh, when I come up to the edge. I'm always gonna buff up to the edge. I'm not gonna sit there and buff on the edge. You'll get the feel as far as that's concerned. Let's get some compound and let's make it happen. I'm gonna set my speed uh, just for demonstration here at probably about 1800 RPM, which is pretty slow uh, for this size of a wheel. So step one, as I always just brush the wheel a little bit. So I'm gonna take my uh, Perfect-It, it's just the system that I use, and uh, to juice up the pad the first time, I'm probably gonna put about that much compound on it. Then I'm gonna bring the buffer around and I'm gonna try to not wear this compound, but I'm gonna tip a little bit and I'm gonna pick that stuff up. I got a sliver of some sort, so, well, okay. It's a metal sliver too. Uh, anyway, then I'm going to increase the speed of the unit and I'm going to put it on uh, cruise control. I'm going to go a little faster. I'm always watching. Like I can see this compound's already dry. You really don't want to let this uh, number one dry. I want to keep it kind of moist. We just buff flat till we get to the edge. We always want to keep that return edge of the pad off the metal just a tiny little bit. If you do that, you really have nothing to worry about. I'm basically just using machine pressure. We don't want this fresh clear too hot. So what we have here, we're just gonna kind of wipe that compound off. Uh, if it starts getting a little too hot, you're gonna start seeing that compound smear. Uh, I'm just scanning for any little sand scratches. Uh, all the scratches are 100% out except for right here uh, because compounds two and three won't touch them. So it's kind of pointless if you uh, get ahead of yourself and a little spit usually works wonders for removing 
you know, the gooed up compound. If it gets hot, it turns into, into goo, unfortunately. So just be careful, it's very fresh clear. It's less than 24 hours old. And don't go digging your fingernail or something silly into it. So a little spit works great, like I said. What we have here is a black pad and then the 61 uh, black compound. Now this stays wet, <coughs> excuse me, uh, remarkably long. So that is enough literally for a third of this panel. So you're gonna notice I'm not gonna sit here and keep stopping. So I've done all my work with compound one and now number two really just enhances the depth of the gloss like majorly. So we'll get the pad wet, go to town. What I'm gonna do now is just hit this uh, with some Meguiar's. Just a quick detailer. There's a Body Shop Safe product out there too, if you uh, really wanna get into that. But I've done these with enough of these that I don't really have a problem with it. So I don't think it's got any silicones or anything in there. Uh, all I'm doing right now is just getting all that buffing compound off and I'm looking for any scratches or anything that I missed anything like that. We really don't want to dry wipe the panel because that can definitely scratch it. This clear is like super fresh. So how do I know when I'm done with compound one? When you don't see any scratches. You can have a little bit of haze in it, but you shouldn't see any scratches. How do I know when I'm done with compound two? Well, after you've gone over it a couple of times. So really what two does, it just increases the gloss like I said. So I can see there's a little something goofy swirl going on here. Uh, we're gonna buff that last time. Shouldn't take a lot. Basically, we want to run with the weight of the tool on the tool. So there's a piece of dirt or something in this rag that's causing me some scratches. No good. Let's get the last of this compound off. Then we'll go to number three, which is completely an optional step. But man, it really makes the darker colors come to life. Okay, number three is like I said earlier, optional. But uh, I'm gonna use it anyway. Number three will never dry. So I kind of like to use a lot of it and that should pretty much be sufficient for the entire panel. But uh, don't buff this compound dry. Uh, we're using the same 2000 RPM. Seems to work well for the panel of this size. I'm gonna distribute it first. And we're going to go to town. have here a finished project. So I'm gonna elevate it from the table, give it one last little spritz. You can buy this stuff by the gallon. Not the exact same product, but uh, pretty, pretty dang close. Anyway, we're gonna give it the wipe down. We're gonna make sure we get all that compound off the edges without dropping the project. And uh, hopefully you can kind of see what we're 
doing here? We're gonna prop it up on our knee like a little baby. Yeah, just born yesterday. Okay, and uh, with soap here yet again, there's some dirt in this rag. It really bugs me when uh, I bring these rags from home, kids uh, drop them on the floor and throw them back in the clean rag pile. So that's just rude. But uh, obviously if you got little fine scratches, you'd have to go back to compound one or two and get those buffed out. But uh, it's not something that ruins it, it's just highly annoying. So uh, there you go, hopefully that's in focus. We don't have autofocus on this camera, so <laughs> somewhere in there, hopefully it sits. But uh, anyway, that is your first project, start to finish. Uh, everything from prepping the metal uh, to running the buffer. So with that being said, good luck. Hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching.